Hello, everyone, and welcome back. Today, we're going to be talking about accessing anterior teeth. So I got this referral. It had already been started. They said they put calcium hydroxide in. Here's what it looked like clinically. And you can see it's that traditional cingulum access. The problem is, look at where the cone beam shows that the actual long axis of the tooth is. And you often miss these canals. And funny enough, even though they had put calcium hydroxide inside the tooth, they didn't actually find the canal. What we're going to be doing is talking about a few tips for when you access anterior teeth. The very first one, this is is a pet peeve of mine, please stop using IRM. It's really messy to clean up <laughs> and cavit's a lot easier to use. Now, if you have a vital tooth, you should not use cavit as it is hygroscopic and so it can dry out the tooth and cause sensitivity. That's the one place where IRM is great. And we're going to get to my second little pet peeve right now. Stop using cotton pellets because they get stuck everywhere. They're terrible. They always ruin the burrs. Use a piece of the sponge. Most of you are going to be using something like an endo ring. You're going to have that sponge already available to you. So use the sponge instead. And what you'll see as we've accessed here is that this is where the long axis of the tooth is. And they actually came and almost went out the buckle. This is a really common thing to have happen. And you see it all the time in the literature where the perforations always occur to the buckle. And that's where these photos are showing. We can see this all the time. This is usually when I have to repair perfs for the anterior, they go out the buckle. And the reason you see it come out the buckle primarily is because of how we were taught. So these are these images right out of dental school textbooks where you go through the cingulum and you have to lift up. And it's, the idea is that you keep the incisal edge intact. The problem with that is you're going to keep going through. And if you're lucky and the canal's wide open, then maybe you drop in there. But ideally, it should look like this, where it goes down the long axis of the tooth through the incisal edge. And so that's the first thing we're going to do here is just the access. I'm going to take the workhorse burr and up right into the incisal edge. Now, I think the reason we used to have issues with this is because with old school PFMs, if it was the lighter porcelain or if they were doing like uh, porcelain jacketed crowns or any of the more delicate things, that porcelain is going to actually fracture. With the modern materials like Emacs or Konia, it's much stronger. And you don't need to do that. What you're seeing here is they haven't even actually got down into the canal space. And so I had to access apically. They almost went out the buckle, but were not actually in the canal apically. And so part of that is because of where the long axis of the tooth is. And as you can see, we're starting to drop down there using the 8C and still not even in the canal. So what we saw was they accessed the tooth, almost perforated, put calcium hydroxide just in not even the chamber, I guess it'd be the tooth structure itself. And this is what we want to try and avoid. And the way we do this is by readjusting the access so that it is in the long axis of the tooth through the incisal edge. Hopefully this is helpful for all of you. We'll go through the process of the tooth, but we got a nice little stick there. The 2006 is able to drop down and you can see once you find these canals in general for anteriors, if they are a little bit calcified, once you find these canals, they open up extremely quickly. Usually when the calcification occurs, it's in the coronal aspect of the tooth and the apical portion still stays pretty stinking wide open. It's not too difficult there. So we're going to go ahead and get the working length here. And what I think this really exemplifies is how important that access is. Look at the angulation. Look at how this, this file is completely straight and it still wants to be pushed out to the buckle and it's hitting on the surface of the porcelain there. And you'll notice when you take working lengths on those traditional cingulum accesses, the file almost comes out bent because it actually gets pushed so far palatally. So this should show the long axis of the tooth ideally is going to go out the incisal edge. Now, in this case, I guess we could have gone even farther here, but I didn't want to have to repair the porcelain. The tooth itself was fine and I was able to find everything without it. So on really, really crazy calcified cases, sometimes it is worth it to do the access through the incisal edge or even from the facial. And there are ways you can use modern composites to block it off. But on a case like this where it's more wide open, it's not really necessary. And what we ended up doing here, there was a little more infection than anticipated. So I ended up medicating it. They had already kind of started it. She was in a lot of pain. And this one, we ended up just doing a quick open of med. But I think the thing to take away here is the importance of using the cone beam to map out your access. Once again, look at how the canal itself shows you, hey, access me right along the long axis. You'll notice this, especially with premolars. And if you've watched my video on accessing teeth, I talk about this a lot, but it's really important to use that cone beam to map out so you know what you're going to get into before you even do the root canal. 
It's the only way we can practice on this exact tooth until we start 3D printing stuff. But <laughs> uh, that is actually a good, one of the questions that was asked to me, of, are we going to ever use a 3D printer? That could actually be one for the really, really crazy cases, maybe 3D print off of the cone beam and get to do the root canal, you know, in your hand. It'd be something interesting. I don't know. Anyway, so what I want you to notice is as I'm putting this cavet in here, how the cavet goes up the incisal edge pretty much to the incisal edge. And if we compare it to what it looked like before, you'll see that it was just a circle just inside the metal. And I get it. A lot of people want to avoid getting into that area, but you can definitely see the difference here. And this is what it looks like. You'll also notice that when we take these x-rays, the cavet now goes all the way through to the incisal edge on the x-ray. So it's a different look than your general dentist may be used to seeing, or if you're a general dentist watching this video, hi, thank you, drop a comment below. And just to kind of show you the difference here, here's where we were before, and here's where we were after. So you can see that the angulation is definitely important and it's going to change kind of your access style. I ended up taking under nine minutes to do this. This is a really straightforward thing. Anterior teeth should not take you forever. Uh, saw her back a month later, finished it up. As you can see, we were able to keep everything nice and small. The other interesting thing, when we take our anterior scans, oftentimes we'll pick up some other things going on here. And sure enough, Seven also had a little finding on the scan. So we ended up taking care of that one as well. The interesting thing, I'm able to keep that axis a lot smaller because I was the first one in. And when you look at it, here is what the axis looked like on 10. And here is what the axis looked like on seven. So much smaller, be able to conserve a lot more tooth structure. And that's kind of what we're looking at here. So hopefully that was useful for all of you. I've enjoyed making these more clinically focused ones. So if there's a topic you'd like to see more of, please drop a comment below. Before we finish up, I do have an exciting announcement. If you'd like to see me speak in person, I will be talking next February at the 31st Annual Island Dental Colloquium, which is put on by UOP and UCSF. You do not have to be an alumnus of either institution to attend, and the CE topics are always fantastic. In addition to my lecture on endodontics, there will be a fantastic update on traumatic dental injuries in children and an adhesive lecture on bonding and restorations, which is always one of my favorite topics as it's constantly changing. The registration generally opens in the summer, but for now, please save the dates. It will be February 9th through the 13th, 2026, up at Turtle Bay in Oahu and should be a fantastic time. I'd love to meet as many of you in person as possible. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please drop them below and I will talk to you all next time.